Hello everyone, welcome to Learning Plan 3, where we are going to talk about competencies. So let's start with our definition of a competency. A competency is any major skill, knowledge, or attitude that is measurable and observable. It can be field or discipline specific, addressed at the lesson level. It answers for the student, what will I be able to do? And I'm sure you'll remember that phrase from our scenario with Fran and Tom. That question, what will I be able to do? That's what a competency is. It answers that question. Okay, in our last lesson, we learned about exit learning outcomes and the three slices of pie and how they trickled down into our course into competencies. Here within our course, we then take that competency, we build an assessment strategy for that competency, and we, gra we grade the assessment, right? An assessment has to, um, ha you know, have an out outcome or have a, you know, a, how do I want to say this? In order to gain something from the assessment, we generally grade the student, right? We say they have either met or not met the competency, or they have, um, earned an A or an F on the competency, and that grading happens via criteria. So we need them to master a competency. For example, in one of my classes I teach Excel, they have to create a spreadsheet, you know, that's one of their competencies. But then within that competency, when I grade them, there's specific criteria that they have to meet. The spreadsheet has to contain proper formulas and functions and this, that, and the other. Okay, let's do an activity to get us thinking about competencies. Here are a list of competencies taken from a variety of areas throughout the college. On a scratch piece of paper, I'd like you to list A through I and then indicate whether the competency listed is either good or needs improvement. So is it good as it stands, it, it stands alone, is it good enough, or does it need improvement? And if it needs improvement, try giving a go at improving it if you feel comfortable. Try um, you know, how would you improve it? Or it might, for, if you're not ready for that, you might just want to indicate, well, what don't you like about it if it needs improvement? You could sort of jot down your thoughts there. Okay, pause the presentation because when we come back, we'll share our answers. Okay, welcome back. Here are the competencies that I asked you to jot down A through I. Those are on the left. And then here are my answers on the right, whether or not I thought they were okay or good enough or if they needed improvements. And we'll talk a little bit about the kinds of improvements that should happen. Let's start with competency A, translate a paragraph of Spanish into English. This competency is a well-written competency for three reasons. First of all, every competency should start with a verb from the verb list. When we're talking about competencies, we have Bloom's taxonomy. You'll see in our Blackboard site, we gave you that list of verbs um, from Bloom's taxonomy. And so your competency, number one, should start with a verb. And then really, that verb should be on the list of Bloom's verbs. So here, this, this verb is translate. The reason we want to start with a verb is because it's specific, it's an action the student takes, it's clear, the student understands exactly what they have to do, in this case, translate. Now, it's not enough to have the verb, right? We have to tell them what they have to do with the verb. So this competency is good. The second reason it's good is because it states specifically what needs to be translated, a paragraph. That's what they're going to translate. And then the third one is they provide, the reason this is good is because it provides that specific structure around what's going to happen. They're going from Spanish into English. Translate a paragraph of Spanish into English. So this is a good competency. All right, letter B, 
Understand the role of Irish immigrants in America's industrialization. I hope you marked this needs improvement. And here's why it needs improvement. First of all, the verb understand is not on the list. And it's not on the list because it's a verb that is not measurable and not observable. And sometimes as teachers, we get, get we feel wishy-washy about this because we feel like, oh, I know when my students understand, right? They have smiling faces and I can see in their eyes that they're understanding what I'm getting at. But really, really, honestly, if we think about it, we have to agree that understanding is really not something observable and measurable. You know, a student might be grumpy and not be making eye contact. And to us, that might look like they're not understanding when really they do. They're just tired or grumpy or whatever. Or they might be looking like they understand. Have you ever had a student like this who's making eye contact and they looking like they understand? And then after class is over, they come up and they say, I didn't get at all <laughs> what you were talking about. So that, so we gotta take a better verb, right? Not understand. We gotta pick a better verb. So if you look at the verb list on black, on the Blackboard site, there's a couple that might work depending on what you're trying to get at. I've listed three here. We could say, explain the role of Irish da da da. Document the role of Irish immigrants or analyze the role of Irish immigrants. So picking a better, better verb would improve this competency. And I would just like to say one more thing that um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the phrase, the role of Irish immigrants. Um, that might want to be clarified because do you want the student to talk about how Irish immigrants helped American industrialization? Or, you know, what about the role? But, you know, um, let's not quibble just yet. I'll get into, <laughs> we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Let's look at competency letter C, start an IV in a patient. What do you think? I marked it as okay or good or stands alone. It's a, got the, it's got the verb from the verb list. It says exactly what they're going to do. They're going to start an IV and it gives clarity about that IV, that IV is going to be started in a patient. Let's do letter D. Here's one that I have. Create a, uh, create a spreadsheet. I mentioned earlier that I teach, we have an Excel course, a one credit Excel course, and this is a competency. And, um, so some people might say, well, it's not very clear, right? You're not, um, you could have more structure about like what kind of spreadsheet. We don't even say it has to be an Excel sp spreadsheet. Could it be a spreadsheet on Google Docs? And here's where I want to mention to you that competencies can still be a little bit squishy. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right term. But you're going to provide specific definition in your criteria. Remember the criteria? that the, In the criteria, we list exactly how we're assessing the competency. So the specifics can go in the criteria. They don't necessarily get laid out in the competency, right? If we were too specific with our competencies, every single class would have 112 competencies. So the competency is like the bigger umbrella, and we leave the specifics for the criteria. Okay, um, and then your competency, how do you decide what, how squishy it should be? Well, it has to fit your class. It has to fit your needs. It has to be able to match up. If, you're, if, it's one, if it's a competency that matches up with a program outcome, you know, that gives definition. That helps you define it. Competency letter E, know how to mix sauces. Again, that tricky verb. How do you know a student knows? <laughs> Let's replace that verb with something like demonstrate, or we could just say mix sauces. Now, I'm not in the culinary arts. Someone in culinary arts might say that mix is not a good verb because there's different ways to mix things. Um, but I'm just trying to give you, uh, you know, thought, food for thought. <laughs> uh, there, um, that it should have a better uh, verb and the verb should come from the list. Okay, competency F, view video on break adjustments. Um, sure, yeah, view is a verb. However, <laughs> how then do we know that they have mastery of the break adjustments? I don't want my mechanic to be someone who viewed a video. I'd rather have my mechanic be someone who already has completed or performed or made break adjustments. So um, in this competency, 
view a video on a break adjustment really is a learning activity, not a competency. Remember Fran, when she was teaching the hand washing, what did she have her students do? Well, she gave a lecture on it. I'm trying to think of all the things. She gave a lecture on it. She had them view a video. She had them do group work and then small group work, and then they practiced. Uh, and then after all of that was done, then she uh, had the assessment of the competency. So this is not really a competency, not viewing a video. Um, that's That would be marked as needs improvement. Letter G, define, describe, and assess. Did you get the trick? This one was a trick question. We have verbs from the verb list, but we have three different verbs, define, describe, and assess. So in a competency, you have to have one verb, right? Otherwise, it's you know you're building too much in. Separate that out, have one verb, and then give that verb, um, you know, say what it's going to take action on, and then uh, build structure around that to clarify. And so in this case, it should be something like assess the role of nursing in a changing healthcare environment. All right, letter H, construct a staircase. This could be good. Um, I listed it as okay. We've got the verb. We have what they're performing the verb on. The last one, I, practice out rolling pie dough. What do you think? What did you mark it as? Hopefully you said needs improvement. Practice is a learning activity. All right, let's take a look here. There's a little homework for this, um, for learning plan three. There's another individual activity where you're going to think about a passion that you have. It could be a hobby or a job. I'm, you know, I'm passionate about my job, so I could pick something from my job, or you could do a hobby, and then you'll list, you'll practice writing competencies for that. And then also, um, just, uh, I, I would just like to mention that if you'd like to log into WIDS and find your competencies there, you don't have to submit anything for that homework. I'm just mentioning that you could go take a look in WIDS and see if you can find your competencies either listed in your outline of instruction or sort of buried in your uh, course. You know, WIDS is funny. It drills down. And we'll get to WIDS in the next learning plan. So you don't have to do it. But if you wanted to, poke around in WIDS and find your competencies. As always, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me at any time.